G'day Hardly Adequate listeners, today is Monday the 22nd of April and we're in week 16, so time is flying by. Uh, this week I'm going to base everything off what I found from This Week in 4 and 6, which Phil Moore has put together and as always he has done an awesome job. Uh, my stuff's actually referenced in this one from last week's Hardly Our Week I believe, but let's dig into here there's a whole bunch here that you can read through what i've actually picked from is two actually all three are from the miscellaneous section down the bottom and we also have the software updates which i've mentioned plenty of times before and i think i've shown once but if you're across any of these within your environment and you're wondering what's being updated then this is also a good source of truth other than i guess the release notes from those software that's coming out if you're not watching those first one we're going to jump into is the life cycle of a digital file. Now, why I like this one is this takes it from the viewpoint of someone who knows nothing about digital files and just talks about it. So where files can come from, software applications, downloads, data transfers from system processes. It talks about where it's gonna find space on the system, reading and writing, deletion, where the footprint might still be and where what's actually happening during deletion in terms of if you're just removing the reference to the file rather than the file from the disk. And then it goes through and talks about the different file systems, which is actually really cool to see. So this is a uh, interesting write-up. It's very basic. And for those that are interested in getting into the technical side and just understanding data lifecycle in, in general, this is a really good one. The next one I have is Instant Investigation Part 1. I always like parts because it means there's more to come, hopefully soon. And this talks about cyber incidents in general, when to call for reinforcements, and then what type of, I would say these are common cyber incidents. Now, there is many more than this. This is not an exhaustive list by any means, but these are probably some of the most common ones that you would see for an external incident response team to be called in for to help. Uh, it's also interesting how people define what an incident is or whether it's a event and they're dealing triaging an event rather than an incident because there's definitely wiggle room in the definition for what a cyber incident is. It then talks about recognition, recognizing the signs and then the initial response, which is pretty standard. So you can look at the, I call it the pick rule, people call it the pie curl, um, but essentially preparation, which means everything you do before an incident, um, investigation or yeah, I think, let's just look this up, but I think it's, now that I'm trying to say it, I can't remember it. But yeah, it comes from SANS, preparation, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, lessons learned. So the preparation piece is not really part of the incident life cycle. It's everything that you do up until the point that you get an identification piece. And then lessons learned is not immediately as part of the, obviously you're jotting stuff down because you're trying to learn things, but it's not immediately part of an incident response. Usually it's a retroactive exercise you're doing to review what happened, what could improve, which then this is a cycle and feeds back into the preparation is the whole point. So there's lots here. This is just a cheat sheet, but there's plenty of resources written up on Pickerel. The other one is NIST, I think, um, which consolidates some of the steps within this one. So that's another good one to look out for. The last thing that I want to lead you with is Cy and I on the Forensic Focus podcast actually had a good chat with Sophie Powell and talks about, I guess, her pathway through her studies into cybersecurity. So last week I was talking quite a lot about, and, and the week before, quite a lot about uh, what you can do to help you get into the industry and, and what you need to do. Uh, yeah, I think um, this was an interesting chat. It's always good to see people's career paths in. You can watch my long form content to see how people have gotten into their careers currently. And I've talked to people who have been in their career anywhere from six months up to 10 years. So there, there's lots of good information to take out of that. Uh, as always, hopefully this has been useful. I've enjoyed putting these together, a nice and short one for this week, and I'll catch you all next week.